Hi, I'm Gustavo Gonzalez. I'm the Global IT Director at ID Conversions. And today, I'd like to talk to you about choosing between some of the options you face when upgrading to Oracle R12. Upgrading to Oracle R12 might seem like a difficult challenge, in part because you face so many different choices. In this video, you will learn a little bit about how to sift through these choices so that you can arrive at a solution that is right for you. We have used Oracle here at the Conversion since 2004, and our footprint includes Oracle Financials, HRMS, Projects, and at the time of the upgrade, CRM. To give us a common reference point, we'll be talking about our in-house upgrade to Oracle R12, which we went live on in January 2009. The first issue 11 users need to resolve is whether to upgrade or re-implement when going to R12, known as the approach. There is no one-size-fits-all answer to the upgrade versus re-implementation question, but there are a few operative questions to consider. Have your core processes changed or stay at the same since you have been on 11i? Has your organization's structure changed or growth since your last upgrade? Have your important configurations, such as charts of account, changed significantly? Is your current system clean, reconciled, and up-to-date? As a good rule of thumb, the more change and growth, the more likely you will need to re-implement. At ID Conversions, our strategy was to limit the scope of our upgrade to keep it as simple as possible to get as stable and on R12 as quickly as possible. To do that, we limit the upgrade to existing applications, delay the re-engineering of any processes, only migrate existing customizations and interfaces, and retain the existing technical and functional architecture. It wasn't until we completed our upgrade from R12 to 12.1 in January 2011 that we added new modules, rolled out MOAC and SLA, and incorporated new customizations. Risk mitigation obviously plays a fundamental part of any R12 project plan. For example, we knew we had to stay in close touch with Oracle support to get our Latin American subsidiaries fully covered under R12's new tax functionality. Similarly, we foresaw that even in a vanilla upgrade, we might need to rebuild some key customizations. We began communicating our efforts very early making sure all relevant parties knew what we were doing, who was affected, and why we would all benefit. Clear communication allowed us to bring business owners closer to the implementation team and help us secure buy-ins from the appropriate stakeholder. What were our critical success factors? First, we got strong executive support right from the beginning, and this quite obviously ensured support from the rest of the management team. Clear role definition was another key element to success everyone's role was defined and everyone understood what their responsibilities were. Project risks, assumptions and expectations were established from the very beginning and we resisted those telltale temptations to expand the project scope in the middle of the upgrade. Upgrading to Oracle R12 is obviously a complex undertaking that can be reduced to a two-minute video. However, we hope that now you understand a little bit about what it takes for R12 migrations to succeed. For more in-depth information on upgrading to Oracle R12, check out our Oracle R12 workshops that IT Conversions is sponsoring. Visit our website at itconversions.com workshops. Thank you.